Number one. About two years ago, I was driving home from a family reunion pretty late at night, and the drive was about two hours. I didn't stay the night because I had to be back for work the following day. Most of the drive was on roads with dense bushes and trees on either side, the real creepy ones you see a lot in movies. Anyway, I had been driving about 45 minutes, and I was starting to get really tired. You know how sometimes you just suddenly become really tired out of nowhere. Well, yeah, that happened to me. I knew I wasn't going to last, but I didn't come across any place that I felt like I could park and safely sleep. Anyway, after it became clear to me that I wasn't going to find a place to pull up, and my tiredness wasn't going away, I did something very questionable. I pulled over to the side of the road onto the grass behind some bushes to try and hide my car from anybody else who was going to come past. I made a mental note that the time was 11.22 p.m. And then I fell asleep. Sometime later, I was awoken by a scratching sound. I looked at the clock, 11.50 p.m. The sound stopped after a few seconds, and because I was still extremely tired, I didn't bother looking around and simply went back to sleep. I was later awoken by the same sound. It was now 12.40am. This time, it really freaked me out because the sound didn't stop. The thought ran across my mind that it was just an animal inspecting the car. But why would it return almost an hour after it had left the previous time? I looked in my rearview mirror and just managed to catch a glimpse of something running away into the forest. Now. At the time, I thought it was the damn hook killer. You know the one that scratched the couple's car and then slaughtered the guy when he got out to investigate? Fuck that, I thought to myself. So I got the hell out of there. There was a bend no more than a hundred yards up the road. And as I came around, there was a fucking car parked off to the side of the road with the driver's side open. I slowed down just to look to see if anyone was in there. There wasn't. Then I looked in my rearview mirror. I didn't see anything. And all of a sudden, this guy comes sprinting around the corner. He starts screaming at me, shouting stuff like, Hey you, get the fuck out of your car now. I nope the fuck out of there and sped off. I never saw that guy again. Number 2 when I was about 13 or 14, I lived on a farm in North Carolina. This wasn't a regular farm that you would expect with fields full of beans and shit. It was actually a pine tree harvestry. Pine needles are a big landscaping commodity, and so we lived basically in the woods and would bale the pine straw every year. Whatever. The point is that my house was in the middle of 550 acres of perfectly lined up long field pines. My living room had a huge picture window. I wouldn't go into the architecture of the house, but it was a weird custom job built by some dentist in the 1930s. The windows in the living room stretched nearly the entire length of the room, maybe 50 feet. The house was built on a subtle hill, so the living room itself sat 5 or 6 feet off the ground, so you had something of an angle to look out at a solid mile of pine trees. During the winter, it was unsettling because you'd get just a bit of snow, enough to reflect some moonlight so that you could set the dogs running around at night. I'll be honest, I hated that room and that window. So, now to the relevant part. I had a cousin over for the weekend, and we were doing what kids do in the country, throwing stuff in the fireplace to see what happens. It is getting late, and the fire is dying down, so... We built the big kingdom of couch cushions and blankets in the living room and got ready for bed. Nothing out of the ordinary until we hear the dogs barking. They were really far away. The property stretches for nearly a mile, so I just assumed they were chasing off whatever animal felt like shitting in my yard. So, my cousin is staring out the window and not saying anything, which prompts the standard, what's up? He just kind of keeps staring and says he feels like he's seeing things, 
Naturally, I get all anxious and start staring out the window as well. Nothing happens for a few minutes, and he gets more and more annoyed with me because I'm asking what he saw. He keeps shushing me so that he can focus. And then we both see it. A shadow of a person moves from one tree to the next. Not a run, not a leap, just a brisk walk from one tree to another. This is probably a hundred yards from the house. We can't actually tell if the person is coming closer or not, because we're dealing with moonlight reflecting off of snow, slush and ice. I guess the crazy part is that we didn't so much freak out, because at this point there is still that chance that we didn't see what we saw, you know? So, we just kept staring. We should have gone to wake up my dad, but he's an idiot and the kind of guy to walk out into the patio and holler into the woods with his rifle. We were just scared enough to agree that we didn't want to taunt whatever is happening. So, about three minutes later, it happens again, but a good 50 feet from where we first saw it. Another person, another tree, a few strides and they were gone. This happened every few minutes for the next half hour, and we just stared. At this point, I should mention that I didn't really have neighbours. The land surrounding our farm was federal paper. I don't know who owns it now, so it was miles and miles of uncultivated trees. You don't see people around the farm, unless they intend to be there. We keep watching as these two figures intermittently appear and vanish, until we finally see one appear, but not disappear. Instead, we focus in on it, and see that now it is running forward. We lose our shit and go wake up my dad. By the time we get into the room with my half-awake father, there is no one to be seen. We sprint around, locking doors and windows. Keep in mind that we're out in the country with no one around. It rarely occurs to lock doors. Every door was worse than the last because you just don't know as soon as you reach the door, someone is going to be trying to open it, although that never happened. We locked everything up, walked around the house at least 50 times making sure no one got in without us knowing, and then convinced my dad to fall asleep in the living room with us while we stared out the window. I never understood why my dad couldn't call the police. He always had this, we take care of our own mentality, and it simply wasn't an option to call 911. The next day, we went out to look, and absolutely, there were footprints everywhere in the snow. We saw them between trees, and then we finally saw where someone was standing right in front of the window. But as I said, I wouldn't have seen them because while I'm seven feet up in the living room, they would have been right beneath me. Number 3 When I was about 10 or 11 years old, I was ill and did not go to school one day. My parents both worked and couldn't get the day off, so they just told me to stay in the house and don't answer the door to anyone, and the usual stranger talks, etc. I was sitting watching TV in the front room that has a big bay window that looks out onto the street, which is a main road with a row of shops across the road. I felt awkward with all the people walking past, so I decided to shut the curtains slightly. And for some reason, as I did, I noticed this man, in his late 40s or early 50s with a beard and glasses wearing a green knitted jumper. He looked like your stereotype child abductor. Something about him walking past just seemed strange, but not enough to play on my mind until he walked past again 10 minutes later in the same direction, as if he had just looped around the block. 10 minutes later, he appeared again and stopped at the edge of the driveway for about 30 seconds looking at the window. He then proceeded to the door looking in the window as he walked by. It was an old Victorian sandstone house with big storm doors on the front that you needed a key to open so he couldn't get in. He knocked on the door a few times but something just told me not to answer. He then came to the window banging on it and saying something but I couldn't make it out. I then noticed the realization in his face that there was a back door. My parents never locked the back door so the dog could come in and out as he pleased. I ran through the kitchen and within seconds of turning the key and locking it, the handle started turning 
and he started banging the door. I just curled up in a ball on the floor in fear. He started trying to open the windows and eventually left about 30 minutes later. I dread to think what could have happened if I had not remembered the back door was unlocked. Number 4 Let me explain who I am. I am a 20-year-old female who is a full-time college student at the nearest Pennsylvania State University branch campus. I work part-time at a shoe store to save up for little things. I usually work only Thursdays, Fridays and Sundays, but my boss really needed me to cover this Wednesday shift, so I obliged. We're mainly a shoe store, but we started carrying a lot of clothing recently. With clothing comes fitting rooms. Today I was left in charge. So, a younger girl and I closed the store. She of course didn't want to stick around past 8.59 as we close at 9, for me to then close up the shop and walk out without her. I always get confused with the credit card machines and it takes me like two extra minutes to close. But you know, everyone has places to be. It's not a huge store, but a lot of people walk in and out, and when you're busy doing things, sometimes you don't notice what's going on. That's when I turn off all the lights. I make sure to do a walkthrough around the store, and double check that no one's there. I walk to the back of the store, got all of my stuff, turned on the flashlight up on my phone just in case, and started turning off all the lights. You see, in the old store, we just had like a control panel that controlled all the lights. Here, every part of the store has a switch you have to individually walk to. Just as I reached the front of the store, the phone rang. Why was someone calling past 9? Who really needed shoes at 9pm? I looked at the caller ID. It was a cell phone. No name, nothing. I picked up the phone and tried hard not to sound annoyed. The voice that came from the other end of the line sounded really stressed out. Please, help. I've fallen in your dressing room and I can't get up. This made my blood run cold. The person hung up before I could even say anything. I was standing at the front of the store right by the exit and the dressing rooms are at the back of the store, right before you enter our stock room. I put one foot in front of the other, making my way to the back. I really didn't want to go back there, but I can't imagine what would happen if someone was there, and I didn't see them. I walked to the back, turned on the light, and checked both dressing rooms. Nothing. There wasn't even any clothing hanging inside. The girl I closed with did a good job cleaning. My first thought was the girl was fucking with me, so I decided to try and call the number back. However, when I did so, all that came up was, I'm sorry, the number you're trying to reach has been disconnected. As soon as I hung up, something crashed in the back. I then hightailed it out of there put the alarm on, left all the lights on and called my boss from my car on my way home. She decided to drive over there and see what happened. Apparently, four of the huge shoe racks crashed in domino effect. They went to check the cameras, but the camera wasn't recording from 8.59 to 9.09 p.m. Number 5 most of my extended family lives in Virginia, spread out all over the place, deep in the literal middle of nowhere. As a matter of fact, the first time I visited my aunt's house, apparently I cried because of how long the dirt road was. My mummy will never be able to find me out here. My granny always tells that story when I visit. She gets a crack out of us, city folk. This particular incident happened in Farmville. Yes, you heard that right. It's not just a Facebook game, it's an actual place. Right in between Tobaccasville and Mechanicsville. Rednecks are creative. Well, I surprised my family for Christmas by flying out to see them. My aunt and I stayed up late watching old reruns of Mr. Bean. At about 2am we were going to bed, but Sadie, her pit, needed to go to the bathroom. Of course, because it's only like 12 degrees outside. 
I had left my jacket in the car, which was parked in the garage. I went outside to grab it. The garage is in addition to the house on the side. There is a back door that overlooks the backyard and lots and lots of trees. My cousin had accidentally driven into it and subsequently broken the garage door, so we had to be taken down. We are out in the middle of backwards country land and there is only a very dim light at the end of the driveway and a small light on the ceiling. Basically, it's almost pitch black. As I'm opening the door to the car, I can't help but feel as if being watched when I glance over my shoulder to the door overlooking the yard and I see a man. It was dark. I couldn't see his face, hat, hoodie zipped up to his chest, his hands were in his pockets and it seemed like he was almost peering down. I got a lump in my throat, already freezing, my goosebumps just intensified. I reached into my car, grabbing my jacket but keeping a visual. I slammed the door and ran. When I ran back to the door to the house, it must have accidentally locked me out. I turn around, and he's standing at the opposite end of where the garage door would have been. At this point, all that's standing between me and this person is a car, truck, and a couple of bikes. I start screaming bloody murder. At first, my voice wouldn't work. It was clogged up by that lump that welled up in my throat when I saw him. I banged and banged on the door. I hit the door so hard I actually ended up busting the door in. My aunt freaked out. She was still sitting in the living room and had only truly heard me when I broke the door. Sadie started to growl and her hair stood up. My aunt woke up her boyfriend. He ran outside in his boxes with a baseball bat. He did a couple of circles around the house, cursing to high heavens. The hooded man was nowhere to be found. Still, to this day, I get anxious visiting my family. There is lots of woods and nothingness for someone to get lost in. Number 6 My house sits further back in the lot than most of the houses. It's a strange layout as well. The sidewalk runs the length of the living room and ends at the front porch, which lets into the living room. Large windows that don't open allow great light into the living room, but at the cost of no privacy. The rest of my family was on vacation, and having the house to myself, I decided I would get smashed. Well, I passed out on the couch in the living room at about 9, when I realized I was too scared to walk back to my room. The couch is great underneath these big windows. I woke up suddenly, not knowing why. I had a severe case of chills, and I could not figure out why. Then, the banging started. It came from right above me. I did not move, but I opened my eyes and looked up at the window. Someone was standing there, pounding on the glass. Without moving, I looked at the cable box. It was around 3 in the morning. The banging continues. Then it stopped, suddenly, but I still did not move. Suddenly, it commences again, coming from two different directions now. Someone is banging on the window, and another person is banging on the front door. They kept doing it and would not go away. Finally, after about 40 minutes, they quit. It was the most terrifying event I can recall at that moment. It made me a nervous wreck after that. I called a friend over the next day to see if he could come over and stay for the rest of the week, and his response was, What the fuck for? So that we can both get murdered in our sleep? <laughs> Thanks a lot, asshole. Hey guys, it's the Grim Reader here. I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, share, Drop a comment in the comment section below as well, and I might reply to you. As usual, check out my other videos and see if they're any good. And until the next video, have a wonderful time and stay safe. The real creepy ones you see a lot in movies. Anyway, I had been driving about 45 minutes, and I was starting to get really tired. You know how sometimes you just suddenly become really tired? out of nowhere. Well, yeah, that happened to me. I knew I wasn't going to last, 
but I didn't come across any place that I felt like I could park and safely sleep. Anyway, after it became clear to me that I wasn't going to find a place to pull up, and my tiredness wasn't going away, I did something very questionable. I pulled over to the side of the road onto the grass behind some bushes to try and hide my car from anybody else who was going to come past. I made a mental note that the time was 11.22pm and then I fell asleep. Sometime later, I was awoken by a scratching sound. I looked at the clock, 11.50pm. The sound stopped after a few seconds and because I was still extremely tired, I didn't bother looking around and simply went back to sleep. I was later awoken by the same sound. It was now 12.40am. This time, it really freaked me out because the sound didn't stop. The thought ran across my mind that it was just an animal inspecting the car, but why would it return almost an hour after it had left the previous time? I looked in my rearview mirror and just managed to catch a glimpse of something running away into the forest. Number 1 About two years ago, I was driving home from a family reunion pretty late at night, and the drive was about two hours. I didn't stay the night because I had to be back for work the following day. Most of the drive was on roads with dense bushes and trees on either side. Now, at the time, I thought it was the damn hook killer. You know the one that scratched the couple's car and then slaughtered the guy when he got out to investigate? Fuck that, I thought to myself, so I got the hell out of there. There was a bend no more than a 100 yards up the road, and as I came around, there was a fucking car parked off to the side of the road with the driver's side open. I slowed down just to look to see if anyone was in there. There wasn't. Then I looked in my rearview mirror. I didn't